Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. My name is Thomas. Today I am going to talk about the Hego HD12 DAC. Forgive me if I pronounce it incorrectly, but I don't know how to pronounce it. So I have it behind me, uh, plugged in. Uh, I'm going to play a clip and then uh, later on I'll take it out and uh, you know I'll show you how it looks like. So the Hego HD12, what can it do? It can play uh, DSD64 in native mode. And of course, it can upsample, I mean, can play 192 clips and so forth, right? Everything that you expect from a new uh, DAC. Uh, it has uh, XLR, RCA output, coaxial, USB, and optical input. I, I usually use uh, USB. I think that's the best, uh, it gives it the best sound, right? Uh, as I said, very recent DAC. So it goes for about 1,500 uh, new. And in the used market, uh, I've seen it usually go for about a thousand, thousand one, right? Um, so why did I buy it? So uh, I've tried about six or seven DACs already, and most of them use the uh, Saber ESS nine zero one eight chip. Uh, it's a fantastic chip, and you find that chip in a lot of high end uh, DACs, right? But uh, I wanted something completely different. I, I guess after you know seven DACs, you feel like change, you want to change change uh, things up, right? So when the uh, HD12 came on the market, uh, when it when it came on the used market, I, I grabbed it right away. I just wanted something completely different. It uses the AKM four three nine nine chip. Now that's uh, a chip that you can find in uh, gears such as a uh, esoteric brand. Uh, I don't know if it's in the CD or if they have a DAC that uses it, but I was reading online that you know there's some of their gear using it. Now, to give you an idea how expensive uh, Exoteric uh, gear can be, uh, my friend actually just bought a CD-ROM and it cost him thirty-eight thousand. That's correct. You heard thirty-eight thousand. That's like probably twice the the, the uh, price of my car, right? So that goes to show that they do doing uh, very high-end stuff. And even the cheapest stuff is still very high end. So, you know, when I read that the AKM, uh, I mean, when I read that the HD12 uses the AKM4399 chip, yeah, that's it. I ran, I go picked it up, plugged it in, and was quite impressed with it. So the first thing that hit me, clarity, uh, amazing. Uh, second thing that hit me is the separation. Uh, like the, the micro detail that you can hear from every instrument, it's very, very clear with this DAC, right? Uh, resolution is, uh, has improved a lot compared to uh, a lot of the older DACs that I use. It's great for uh, if you have a speaker that has a hyper tweeter, super tweeter, uh, it can really showcase the power of uh, your tweeters. Uh, when you talk about stuff like decay attack, yes, definitely very good. Uh, I talk about separation, I talk about you know how things sounded more real right when there's when there's good clarity that's what i noticed things will sound more real apologize for my kid making noise over there uh so i was definitely very impressed with it right um so uh as i mentioned before it has xlr and rca input uh, i tried both i can't really tell the difference between both uh, output output sorry not input output um, there are some gear that I can tell a big difference. For example, like the classic CA2300. Uh, when I switch from RCA to XLR, it's like a completely different app. Uh, this, I don't feel that. I feel like, yeah, it's, it's about the same. Uh, I'm not the type that go into meditation and try to hear the, the ultimate fine detail when I change cables. I just, if I can't tell easily, for me, there's not enough difference to, to talk about, right? I'm sure, yes, there might be difference, but it's not like, whoa, you have to use XLR. There's no way out of it. Like, no, no, I mean, XLR, RCA, uh, for me, they both work well. Uh, here's the thing with uh, audio equipment, right? Just because you read a lot of reviews about it being fantastic on the internet, doesn't mean that it is good for you. So there's a lot of good reviews here. And in fact, if you look at some of the reviews, uh, like. I call them professional reviews because they're well written and fancy web page and so forth. Uh, they would compare this. They, they thought that this this stack should be in the two thousand five hundred dollars zone, right? Yeah, to some extent, I, I would say okay, I get what they're saying, right? 
Um, but for me, this deck is not for everyone. Uh, the case in point is because I own, I play with a lot of speakers, right? And what I notice is that, first of all, it doesn't match well with speakers that are bright. Sorry for my kid again. Um, a good example is the Focal 836. So I brought it to my friend's home, plugged it in, you know, hoping to impress him and go like, look at this new deck I got, it was fantastic in my home because I have a Titan Earthquake. Now that uses a soft dome tweeter, soft dome uh, bit range. So great, 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 good. Uh, so I brought it over, plugged it to his 836 and we're like, oh man, my ears are bleeding. It's like that, right? So if you have uh, monitor audio, uh, GX300 or monitor audio rs6 here yeah you, you might be you might want to be careful if you want to use this stack right uh i can only successfully use it with the monitor audio gx300 for example when i pair it with my acuface because by nature my acuface is very musical it is the older vintage uh here uh, the acuface c222 mp266 so it's very soft and mellow by nature so it it, it worked okay with the HD12 Hugo, right? Uh, if you have a monitor, uh, odd, well, no. if you have a Paradigm Monitor 11 version 7, uh, it's gonna hurt your ears. If you have a bright setup, uh, and your speakers are very bright, uh, I'll be cautious uh, about it, right? Um, so if you have uh, anything that, that uses soft dome tweeter, soft dome mid-range, yes, go for it. If you feel like you're lacking resolution, uh, lacking sharpness in your setup, definitely this will level up your whole, uh, your whole setup, right? Um, in fact, uh, somebody did come to my home when he, somebody came to my home and uh, he told me, you know, he felt that his uh, BMW, now the older, older ones, right, AO2, you know, it's missing that, that, res that resolution, that sharpness. He, he's, you know, he tried different amps and so forth. So for me, that would be a, somebody that you know can benefit from these uh, HD12 uh, stack, right? So, uh, if you have ten thousand dollar speakers, I, for me, decks that are under two thousand new are not good for ten thousand dollar speakers. I'll talk about that when I talk about my Exasound E28 and the Macintosh D150 and what we discovered when we were playing with a thirty thousand dollar setup, right? And so, if you have a ten thousand dollars speaker and a very fancy setup, I'm not sure this stack is good enough, right? Because what I noticed after spend like trying uh, uh, maybe seven stacks and then maybe more to be honest, is that the budget stacks, right? Their their pursuit is towards clarity. Uh, yes, they work on they're good for imaging and resolution and blah 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 blah, but it's not high end sound. High end sound for me is um, the that has to be able to produce silky smooth sound. I like smoothness. Maybe that's why I like Macintosh gear, right? Maybe that's why I like soft dome tweeters. I, I want that smoothness. And I only observe that in high end uh, expensive decks. That's one thing I notice uh, in common with them, which I'll talk about uh, uh, another day, right? So uh once again if you have cheap speaker that you wish that you have more resolution your soft dome tweeters or your setup is not a bright setup this is the deck to get uh if you want to change it up right uh, and you get tired of those uh nicer e, uh, the ess chip or the wolf wolf something i forgot the, the burr brown chips right so uh definitely a good alternative so now i'm gonna play a clip um I guess to give you a point of reference, I'm gonna play first with the Hego, and then I'll change it to my other uh, DAC that uses the 9018 chip, right? Uh, once again, I'm using a cell phone to record this. Uh, I'm too lazy to use my big camera. Uh, so forgive me if, if it's not very obvious in the recording, but having spent time with both DAC uh, extensively, uh, I can tell you there is definitely a, a significant difference. So that clip was 
was with the Hego HD12. Now I'm going to change to the other one, the Exasound E28. Now I'm comparing a $1,500 DAC here to a $4,000 DAC. To be honest, when I play it just like that, most people probably can't tell a significant, significant difference. But, well, maybe because I'm using this uh, dying audio, but uh, with a high resolution speaker, there is uh, definitely a gap, right? In terms, I mean, it sounds better with the Exasound E20, at least to my taste, because I like, I like it smooth. Um, but, you know, it, hopefully it gives you an idea. So once again, I don't know if you can tell the difference with the, uh, the two decks because of my cell phone recording here. Uh, but definitely, I, I on my side, I can tell that the E28 is definitely more metal and the HD12 here, it's uh, more sharp, right? So it's, uh, it's a nice unit, a bit dusty here. I've been using it for a while. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. You have your XLR output, uh, RCA, nice layout, very compact. Um, it's funny because I was reading up on uh, the, you know, on Deagle, uh, all the design looks the same. Apparently the, the, the philosophy is that spend less on the, uh, the appearance and spend everything in the design, uh, inside, right? To, to use the best sound possible. So they have a very generic look, um, but apparently all their gears are top notch. Um, so once again, just be it's fantastic, but you have to be very careful with matching it, right? So right setup, no good. good. Um, another thing, it's, uh, it's a bit annoying here, is that there are no way for you to find out if it's uh, outputting at 192 or DSD uh, by looking at the manual. I have to actually reach out to them and it turns out the secret if you have a Hegel HD12 and you always wonder is it playing DSD is it running at 192 the secret is here you see the input button you point at it and you just keep holding it and at one point you know it's usually written USB on it it will change and it'll show you the sample rate so yeah it took me a while to, fit to, to get that answer so yeah so with that I guess I'll uh, wrap it up uh, any questions just put it in the comments uh, wrap it up at this point uh, definitely a, a back that you should try it's not a cheap deck um, I will unfortunately put it up for sale because uh, I've, I've done playing with it and I think that uh, my taste is more geared towards uh, trying to achieve that silky smooth sound so uh, my main speaker my final speaker will probably be the Titan Earthquake, it has this problem, but uh, I, I like its uh, soft on Twitter, soft on uh, uh, mid range, and the fact that it's very warm. And right now, because I got this uh, Exasound E28 DAC, um, so it's more to my taste. Uh, but uh, definitely, I can see why there's so many good reviews on it. Uh, if you do come across one for a good price, uh, definitely give it a try. I don't think you'll be disappointed. All right, thank you.